Hey, future respiratory therapist. I've got a video here for you today where I want to tie together things like peak pressure, plateau pressure, dynamic compliance, static compliance. We want to talk about the problems that will cause these different scenarios, and then we're going to break it down and add a disease process onto it. And then when we're end, at the very end of this, I want to show you how each of these will present different, differently on your pressure uh, scalar graph. Okay, so let's just jump into it and talk about peak, plat, dynamic, static, all those things. Okay, now the first thing we know here is that when we talk about dynamic compliance, okay, we're talking about our airway resistance and our alveolar compliance. That's important to understand because dynamic compliance is driven by, um, is the result of air moving through the airways, okay? So it is airway resistance and alveolar compliance. Now, static compliance is a reflection of our alveolar compliance alone, okay? So that's important. This is when you do an inspiratory hold and you get a static compliance measurement and there's no air movement and it's just a reflection of alveolar compliance, okay? So it's important to understand. Now, to understand how we get these things, you just need to go back to your formula, right? We know that dynamics formula is tidal volume divided by PIP minus PEEP. This gives us change in volume over change in pressure. That's what compliance is, okay? Now static is tidal volume divided by plateau minus PEEP. So what do we see here? This tells us that our peak is also going to be a reflection of our airway resistance and our alveolar compliance. And plateau being associated with static compliance is only a reflection of alveolar compliance. Now, just want to lay the framework with that right there first of all because when you look at this you're going to see how these things show up differently when you're talking about airway pressures, okay? So, I'm going to put one more formula up here and it's um, um, we're talking about airway resistance and that one is uh, PIP minus plat divided by flow in liters per second, which means you have to divide your flow by 60 to get liters per second, okay? So remember that. Now what these tells you, the reason these formulas are all up here is because we're going to be talking about all of these things. And my point is, is that look, PIP, PLAT, PIP, PLAT are constant reminders and constant game players in all of these formulas, okay? So here it goes. If your peak inspiratory pressure goes elevates and goes up, just above, I'm not saying above a normal value, I'm just saying throughout your shift, you notice your peak inspiratory pressure going up, okay, for your patient. But you notice that your plateau is staying the same. It has not moved. So um, let's say we had a um, peak that was going up to 45, and we had a plateau that was remaining at 20. Okay, so you can see our peak is up, our plateau is normal. Now what does this tell me? I don't even have to do a formula. I don't even have to do this math. I understand that my peak going up is going to cause my dynamic compliance to go down. This patient is going to have a decrease in dynamic compliance. Now because my, plat my plateau pressure is staying normal, I know that my static compliance is not going to be changed, so it's going to remain normal as well. Okay? Now watch this. If my plateau pressure is unchanged and in an acceptable range, then I do not have an alveolar compliance problem. This is why my static compliance also is unchanged. Now, so what does that mean for us? Well, if it's not an alveolar compliance and it didn't affect our plateau and our static, then when we look at our peak airway pressure, it's not an alveolar compliance here. It must be an airway resistance problem, which is what the problem here is. We have an increased 
in our airway resistance. Now, when we think about this in conjunction with the disease process, the most common one that comes up is going to be asthma, right? So asthma would cause an increase in airway resistance. It's an airway problem, which is gonna show up here. Your alveolar compliance should remain normal, at least in the acute phase, okay? Now, something else that might happen is, is we have our peak pressure go up. Okay, so let's say it goes up to 45. If it goes up to 45, and let's say our plateau pressure goes up to 40. Now, I know this is an extreme example, and we would probably be talking about going into pressure control at this point, but this is not, I'm just showing you the theory behind this so you can grasp the concepts here, okay? Plateau goes up to 40, peak goes up to 45. Our dynamic compliance, because our peak pressure has gone up, our dynamic compliance will go down. Our plateaus have gone up, which means our static compliance is going to go down. Okay, now, what's the problem here? Well, if my plateau pressure went up, then I know we have an alveolar compliance problem. And because we have an alveolar compliance problem, it's going to affect peak pressure, it's going to affect dynamic compliance, and it's also going to directly affect static compliance. So we clearly here have an alveolar compliance problem and this could be most associated with something like ARDS or pneumonia or something like that okay now here's what I want to show you if I tell you that you have a decreased dynamic compliance and a decreased static compliance if I ask you if you have an airway resistance problem you don't know the answer just by those two numbers Okay, you have to actually, in this scenario, because I'm going to draw one more box up here just for the fun of it. Okay, let's say that our peak pressure goes up to 60 and our plateau pressure goes up to 40. Now, this doesn't look that much different than what we just dealt with, right? Plateaus are up, peaks are up. Obviously, we know our dynamics are going to be down and our static is gonna be down. But in this case, we might be dealing with both an alveolar compliance and an airway resistance problem. Now, how do you know that, Joe? How would I be able to determine that? Well, let me show you the difference, okay? So this may be both, okay? When I say both, I mean alveolar compliance and airway resistance. And this may be an asthmatic that develops a pneumonia. Okay, that would cause a parenchymal problem or an alveolar problem by the pneumonia and then the asthma um, uh, component would be causing an increase in our airway resistance. So, so how do I know that this one is both and this example is just alveolar compliance? Well, I have to look at my airway resistance to calculate it, to see what it is. So let's just real quick, looky here. The difference between 45 and 40 is 5. It's a very small difference. Do you remember the formula? It was PIP minus PLAT divided by flow. What drives this formula is this top portion right here. Okay? PIP minus PLAT is going to be the bulk of this formula. So here, if I do PIP minus PLAT, I get 5. Well, that's not going to be an increase in airway resistance. you got to get normal airway resistance with an artificial airway is less than 10. That's not going to get less than 10. There's no way to get it there. Divide it by 1, divide it by 0.83, divide it by 0.67. Those are your liters per seconds for 60, 50, and 40. So if you do 50 liters per minute divided by 60, you'll get 0.83 liters per second. And then do 5 divided by 0.83, and you'll get somewhere around 6 something. Okay? So my point is, is this is not an increased airway resistance. So this one is only an alveolar compliance. However, when we look here, we do 60 minus 40. Now we're at 20. And this is clearly going to be greater than 10. And so here we have a decreased static compliance because of our alveolar compliance. Or right here, de increased plateau, which is causing a decreased static compliance, which is associated with the alveolar 
compliance issue related to the pneumonia and the peak inspiratory pressure is driving the dynamic pressure down even further related to the airway resistance associated with the asthma component. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Now what I want to do here real quick is show you, um, I'm going to erase this third one. And um, keep it in mind though, but I'm going to erase it. So we're going to call this number one. So number one would look something like this on your pressure waveform. Now notice we have a big difference between our PIP and our plateau. So when we look at our pressure waveform, we're going to see something like this. So the PIP here is 45, the plateau here is 20, and the difference between them is your big airway resistance problem, which is what we said the problem was there. This is what it would look like with asthma, okay? Now when we look at number two, what we're going to see is that it's going to look completely different. We do not have a big gap between our PIP and our plateau. And so this is going to be look more like this. Okay, we have a PIP of 45, we have a plateau of 40, and our difference is very small. So here we do not have an airway resistance problem. We just have an alveolar compliance problem. Okay, and then if if we were to com combine the two for the example that I already raised due to space, um, you would see it would look like this. It would come up, way up, and in here, and in here. And then our PIP was, remember, at 60. Our plateau was at 40. So we have an increased plateau, which is in this space here, and we have an increase in airway resistance. So this would be due to the pneumonia and this gap here is due to the asthma or the airway resistance. And that's how you can use your airway pressure, your scalar pressure um, waveforms to assess compliances and understanding how airway resistance will show up and also understanding how alveolar compliance will show up. Now when you're talking about the rest of this stuff, really the whole purpose is this. You have to understand your disease, the anatomical alterations, understanding am I dealing with a parenchymal problem or an airway problem, and how those are going to affect your peaks, your plateaus, your airway resistance, your dynamic and your static compliance. And I hope this makes sense. And if it doesn't, please leave me a question, a comment, and I'll be sure to get back with you. Best wishes.